Hey everyone, you probably noticed that my voice sounds a little different and is a little strained today. That's because I've got a sore throat. But my wife said she thought it sounded a little creepy. So I figured I can suck it up and get through it. This is only about 15 minutes, so it's not going to be too bad. I've mentioned in the past, here and there, how I've got some issues with my throat. And I have debated over the past year if I want to go into detail about this or not, but I don't want to get into the whole sympathy, pity thing. You know, I, I don't want this to be a crutch. Anyway, in March of 2020, I was diagnosed with throat cancer, stage 3 squamous cell carcinoma. Between the surgery, the chemo, and the radiation, it did quite a bit of damage to my throat and, well, to the inside of my mouth. The result of that, well, from the surgery, the uvula at the top of your mouth, little hanging down thing, I don't have one anymore. And surprisingly, that produces moisture for your mouth. The salivary gland on the right side of my mouth is completely dead. And the one on the left side only produces a thick mucus. I know, it's disgusting. So my mouth doesn't get the lubrication that it needs, so my throat gets sore quite often. But I also want to add, I am cancer-free going on two years, so I will take that trade for my life any day. I'm going to put a picture up so that you can see what my neck looked like when the radiation was at its worst at the end. But before that, I just wanted to give you a graphic warning. It, it's a really bad third-degree burn. It, it looks gnarly. So I'm just going to leave it up for just a couple of seconds. And if you want to take a closer look at it, just pause on it. So here's the image. By the way, that white stuff on it is an antibiotic cream. And there you go. All right, now let's start the story. I'll try not to bore you with the details of my personal life. But there's a bit of setup for this. I have a toxic family, hung out with shitty friends and dated an abusive ex that led me to where I am now. Living in the middle of nowhere, rural New York was just suffocating. There wasn't a single good thing about where I came from, so I pulled together what little I had and escaped that hellhole. It was tough at first as I bounced around between hostels the first few weeks I got here, but it felt like my life was changing for the better. My plans going forward are to work as much as possible, save as much money as I can, make some cool new friends, and eventually live in a nice place. I was lucky enough to land a waitress job at a nice restaurant but it was almost across the city where I stayed, so I had to commute on the busy subway to get to work. I'm a tiny 24-year-old woman, and honestly, it's a bit nerve-wracking to be alone all the time. I just walked a bit faster and kept my head down if anything happened. After a few weeks of work, I was finally able to find a cheap apartment a few blocks away from the restaurant. The apartment building has definitely seen some things, but anything was better than living bunk to bunk with strangers. You would think my place would be massive with eight floors within a withered brick building, but when I reached my new home on 8B, I was faced with a space where everything from the bedroom to the kitchen was just a few steps away. As I got settled into my apartment, I was able to convince myself that it was still better than being abused every day. I'd sometimes work late, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m., and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous going home at night. I've had a few instances where I had creeps on the street walk a bit too close to me, and a few of them even tried to follow me home. Thankfully, each time a cop or someone would be close by to intervene, but those are different stories altogether, for another time. This all happened one night after a particularly hectic shift at work. After cleaning up my section and clocking out for the night, I said goodbye to my co-workers as I went out into the cold night. My mind was completely blank and my body went into autopilot towards my apartment building. I'm not sure if it was because I was just spaced out or what, but I remember 
That night, everything was eerily quiet. Before I knew it, I was already at the entrance of my building. The door was old and heavy, so I snapped back into reality to exert an extra bit of strength to get inside. The door groaned as I pulled it open. I squeezed my body through. I was met with warm air, my cheeks tingling as my skin adjusted to the temperature. I stepped towards the elevator and pressed the button to call it down. I waited for a few minutes, then a minute more, before pressing the button a couple of more times. The elevator didn't come down, and I cursed under my breath as I made my way towards the stairs. I was so exhausted, and the thought of going up all these stairs just to get to my apartment on the top floor was already torture. I was so ready to just crash onto my bed. That thought alone drove me to begin my climb up the stairs. I kept my head down, and with my hand on the rail, I began to go upwards towards my room. My footsteps made an echoing thud with each step I took. A few steps down, and a million more to go. I made it up to the second floor on the stairwell, and as soon as I crossed the threshold, I was hit with a pungent smell. It completely took me by surprise, and I was stopped in my tracks from gagging. I pressed my hand over my mouth and nose in a futile attempt to shield myself from the smell. Whatever it was, it smelled of something rotten, and it began to fill my mouth and my lungs I could almost taste the air, and my imagination made me think I was licking decaying meat. I quickly pressed onwards to escape whatever was making that smell, and as I continued up the stairs, I realized that the sound of my footsteps weren't alone. With each step I took, I could hear a faint pit-pat sound of someone else's footsteps coming from right below me. I pulled my head down over the rail, and I saw someone else slowly walking up the stairs as well. It was a woman wearing a sheer white nightgown. Her thin frame was visible through the fabric. She had her head down, raven hair flowing down with her arms laying down by her sides. She was walking up the stairs with a light pit-pat from her bare feet pressing against each step. The woman looked just like the girl from those grudge movies, except that she was extremely tall. I'm pretty short, just a bit over 5'4", but this woman had to be at least 6 feet tall. Her body was hunched over and her hair was covering her face. As she got closer, the smell grew stronger. I've only seen a few people that lived in my apartment building, and I've never seen her before. In short, I was pretty unsettled, so I quickly made my way up towards the third floor. Faint pants began to escape my lips, only a few flights of stairs, and I was already getting tired. Then I heard the light pit-pat of a woman's footsteps again, except this time they were faster. I turned around, and before I knew it, I saw her tall frame hunched over behind me. That nauseating smell forced its way down my nose and throat. I was halfway up toward the fourth floor, and she was a couple of steps before the third. She was just a couple of feet away from me, past my short breaths, I could hear her take deep, scratching inhales with croaking exhales. I didn't know if it was just coincidence or not, but I quickly turned and bolted up the stairs. I shot past the fourth floor, and the noise behind me had suddenly increased in tempo. I was fully convinced that this woman was following me. Enough was enough, so I started to run up the stairs. I zoomed past the fifth floor. My heart was racing, and each breath I took was burning cold in my chest. I couldn't slow down, 
and that woman's footsteps were loud and echoing behind me with a pit pat. I swear her breath was right behind my head, and a warm mist hit my neck that caused a chill to run down my spine. What's worse was that damn smell grew even stronger, the odor of decay. My mind began to race. I was nearing the sixth floor and wasn't sure if I should start banging on doors on that floor to get help or attempt to make it to the safety of my apartment. What if they didn't answer the door? Would I even make it to my apartment? What if she ends up catching up to me? After that final thought, I stupidly turned around and I felt faint when I saw that she was indeed just a couple of steps behind me. Not only that, she was crawling up the stairs like some sort of animal with her long pale limbs and her black hair as shadow covering her entire face. I let out a scream as I raced up the stairs even more. I hoped in my mind that someone would come out and save me, but as I made it onto the seventh floor, I realized there was no savior coming to my aid. I had just one more floor left, and my apartment was the first door on the right from the stairs. I prayed, begging for enough strength to somehow make it to the door before whatever that thing was made its way to me. That was when I made the mistake of jinxing myself. I felt my right leg falter as soon as I made it halfway up towards the eighth floor. My face began to crash towards the step, but I was able to catch myself in time. I turned to see that the woman had caught up and I could feel the blood drain from my face as my chest tightened at the sight of her. Her raspy breaths filled my ears, and she lifted one of her long, pale arms to reach towards me. She took a deep breath and let out a gravelly string of words. Come with me. Her long fingers slowly wrapped around my ankle and began to pull me towards her. No, stop. I screamed at the top of my lungs. I kicked as I turned up to grab the steps ahead of me in order to pull myself away from her grip. I was in a desperate struggle to escape as I continued to kick at her. I heard the snapping of bones. I was expecting a rush of pain to shoot up my body until I realized that the sound of breaking bones wasn't from me but from her. The woman's grip loosened around my ankle, and I quickly crawled up the stairs without turning back. I got up on my feet and ran to my apartment door, turning around to see if my attacker was behind me or not, until I suddenly slammed into something that knocked me on my ass. From the floor, I looked up and saw the familiar face of my ex-boyfriend looking down at me, an image all too familiar that caused a plethora of flashbacks to burst in my brain. I tried to lift myself up, but before I knew it, he had already grabbed my arm and yanked me up. I saw in his eyes so much anger something else that I was familiar with. I winced at the pain from where he was squeezing me, and I begged for him to let go. I was stuck between a rock and a hard place, stuck between two monsters. He looked at me and scoffed. His voice boomed as he spoke. You bitch, do you know how long it took me to find your pathetic ass? I felt so small now, everything that I had worked so hard to escape was now right in front of me again. Please, I'm so sorry. Let me go, please. We have to get inside. I wailed, like always, my words fell upon deaf ears. His gruff voice boomed again. You and I are going back home 
and you're going to stay where you fucking belong. I tugged at my arm, but I couldn't move it an inch within his grasp. With my free hand, I swiped it across his face. I could feel his skin tear under my fingernails. He turned his head, and I saw my scratch marks had caused thin streaks of crimson. My little victory quickly turned to pure fear as he turned back to me with his face twisted in rage. He lifted a fist, and I just stood, closing my eyes to await the impact until I heard him let out a gasp. His hand loosened on my arm, and I heard him shout, What the hell is that? I kept my eyes shut, but I knew what he was referring to. I could hear the pit-pats of her steps, the deep, raspy breaths echoing through the hallway, and the air filled with the smell of rot. I curled into a ball, awaiting one of the monsters to come and finish me. Instead, I heard my ex's footsteps thud away from me, following by faster pitter-pattering of the woman towards him. I was on the floor next to the door of my apartment, cowering like a small child as I heard the thuds of impact. I looked to see the woman, so tall and thin, hovering over my ex and beating him senseless. Blood began to splatter with each blow to his face. Then I heard a door creak open. I turned towards the direction of the sound to see an old woman peeking through the cracks. Her face was pale as a sheet and filled with fear, a fear I had grown too familiar with tonight. I couldn't speak. The words just wouldn't come out, and all I could do was mouth out, Help. I saw her take a deep breath and open the door. She had a cell phone gripped in her hands. I, I already called the police. Her meek voice filled the hallway. We both looked down the hall and saw my ex bloodied and beaten on the floor with no sign of the woman in sight. The old woman and I were frozen in place for what felt like hours until the police finally showed up from the elevator. My ex was beaten to near death by a mystery assailant. The old woman and I described the tall woman to the police, but they were in disbelief. My ex was rushed to the hospital, and that was the last night I ever talked to him. A couple of days after that, I was filled with terror when I thought of going up those stairs. Luckily, the elevator worked without fail. Eventually, I went next door towards the old woman's apartment to finally thank her for helping me. When she opened the door, she looked at me with surprise, but invited me in for a cup of tea. We sat in silence for a moment until I asked her if she knew who the woman was. She stared at me for a moment with her pale blue eyes and told me a story. A long time ago, when she was a little girl, living in this building, there was a woman who lived with her husband somewhere in the apartments. She remembers that one day everyone was complaining about a smell coming from one of the rooms, and eventually the owner of the building had opened the apartment to find the tall woman beaten by her husband with her corpse left to rot. The old woman recalled being just a little girl amongst the crowd of people seeing the dead body being carted away. The smell was horrible. I finished my tea, thanked her again for her help, and went back to my apartment. When I reached my door, I stood there, and took a few minutes to take in all of the information. I squeezed my eyes shut, and I heard the pit-pats of bare feet behind me. Thank you, I whispered to the tall woman. I know that she must have been trying to help me. From the elevator to the stairwell, the tall woman was just trying to help me avoid a fate like hers.